In this unit, we will set up the project for a steady state charge transfer simulation in a PM diode as our first simulation with the charge solver. As the first step in simulation workflow, we need to add the materials needed in our simulation. Let's open the electrical and thermal material database. This database contains more than 40 common semiconductor, conductor, insulator, and alloy materials. There is also a material type called fluid, which applies to any liquid or gas, for example air, present in the simulation region. In this example, we will use the material silicon available in the material database. The material properties window for silicon has three tabs, electronic properties, recombination, and thermal properties. The first two tabs contain electrical properties of the material which are used by the charge solver. The third tab contains thermal properties of the material used by the heat solver. For this example, we will focus on the electrical properties of the materials only. Select the silicon material from the material list. Click on the electronic properties tab which contains the electronic properties of the material used in the simulation. For the purpose of this example, we will keep all the properties in their default values and click create to add the material to our material list in the objects tree. Note that both electrical and thermal properties of the material will be added to the simulation, but when using the charge solver, only the electrical properties, which are marked with the icon CT, will be considered in the simulation. Next, we need to add aluminum as the second material used in our simulation, serving as metal contacts for our diode. To do so, select aluminum from the list and leave the electrical properties to their default values. Again, clicking create will add the material to the simulation. Click OK to close the material database. The structures section of the design tab can be used to introduce various types of structures into the simulation volume. To create a silicon substrate, we will add a rectangle object to the simulation region, also shown under geometry in the objects tree. Select the rectangle and click the edit button to edit its properties. We will name it substrate and set its x and y span to 2, z minus 30, and Z span 60 microns. We will also choose its material to be silicon, which was previously added to our material list. Then we add another rectangle to represent the diode's anode contact in our simulation. Let's name it anode and choose the same X and Y span as the substrate, 1 micron for Z and a Z span of 2 microns. Select the material to be aluminum. Another rectangle is also needed to define the cathode contact of the diode. Let's add another rectangle, name it cathode, with the same x and y span as other rectangles, z value of minus 61, and z span of 2 microns. The material would be aluminum as well. After defining the geometry of the structure to be simulated, we can define our simulation region. We leave its dimension to be 2dy normal and keep all boundaries closed. Under the geometry tab, let's set the x span to 1, z to minus 30, and the z span to 61 microns to ensure that both the contacts and the substrate are included in the simulation region. Next, we need to add the charge solver. Note that once the solver is added, all the simulation objects belonging to the charge solver become available under a new tab named Charge. Let's set the charge solver properties. Since we are performing an isothermal steady state simulation, the solver physics and mode should be set accordingly. Set the normalization length to 10,000 microns. Since we are setting up a two-dimensional simulation, this parameter will determine the length of our structure, which is the width of the diode in this example, in the third dimension. This is needed by the solver to calculate volume-dependent parameters such as contact currents. Under the Mesh tab, we set the minimum and maximum edge length values to 0.01 and 4 microns respectively, 
to ensure an adequately refined mesh based on the dimensions of our device. Let's leave the rest of the settings to their default values and close the window. To ensure that the simulation materials and geometry are defined correctly, we can switch to the partition volume mode. We can confirm that the simulation is formed of three domains with a silicon layer in the middle surrounded by aluminum contacts on the top and bottom. Now is the time to define the doping profile of our device. In this example, to create a PN junction in the diode, we will dope the entire substrate with a light N-type doping and then apply a heavy P-type doping on one end. This can be done using the constant type doping objects. Let's add a constant doping region and name it NAP. Then set the X and Y span to 2, Z to minus 30, and Z span to 80 microns. You will notice that we set the span of the doping object to be larger than that of the silicon substrate. This is to ensure that the entire substrate is doped with this type of doping. The dopant type should be n-type and doping concentration should be 1e15 per cubic centimeter. For the p-side of the junction, we add another constant doping object, name it p -well, with the same x and y span as the other doping object, z value of minus 7.5 and z span of 25 microns. The dopant type should be p with a concentration of 1 E17 per cubic centimeter. Next, we need to add a band structure monitor to visualize the band structure across the PN junction. From the monitor section of the charge tab, click on the band structure monitor to place the monitor in the simulation. We will set the type to be linear Z to have a one dimensional monitor along the Z direction and set its Z to minus 30 and Z span to 80 microns. This is larger than the Z span of the simulation region. In such cases, the span of the save data will be determined by the span of the simulation region and will ensure that the data is recorded exactly up to the edge of the simulation region. Note that the chart solver will only report the band structure inside semiconductor materials such as the silicon substrate here and not inside metal contacts. Finally, we need to define the boundary conditions of our simulation. Here, we will use an electrical boundary condition to set the bias voltage of the anode contact. Click the electrical button from the boundary conditions section of the charge tab. Name it anode and set its mode to steady state. Since we need to apply a forward bias to the diode, and obtain its current over a range of bias voltages, sweep type should be range and set the voltage to sweep from 0 to 0.8 volt in 17 points. Also make sure that the forced ohmic option is set to true so that the metal contact is forced to be an ohmic type. Under the geometry tab, set the surface type to solid and select anode as the solid to apply the boundary condition to the anode contact. We also need to define a voltage for the cathode contact by adding another electrical boundary condition named cathode, this time with a single sweep type, and zero as voltage to define the contact as grounded. To assign this condition to the cathode, select the surface type solid and choose cathode as the solid. If you select the boundary condition object while still in partition volume mode, you can observe where the boundary condition is applied to. The simulation setup is now complete and you can save the file. Later in this section, we will learn how to run and analyze this simulation.